Welcome to that American Football Show, powered by EP Sports. EP Sports is a top supplier in the UK for all your American football needs, helping players and coaches reach their potential since 2007. Check them out at epsports.co.uk. And it is our 100th episode. Uh, just a shout out to all our listeners and fans who have helped us uh, keep going and providing feedback and just listening to us. Uh, we've even dragged Joe away from moving house <laughs> just to have a, a little appearance for our, our little 100th episode. Yeah, it's got to be done. I mean, 100 episodes. I mean, it's nearly two years since the old... Uh, I, I, don't, how many, I don't know how many listeners know how we sort of came together. Like we've told, I think we've told people sort of like not on recording, but since that Reddit post where we all came together, which was quite nice. <laughs> yeah, recording, yeah. recording over Skype on the iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> we come have come a long way. Come a long way. Yeah, it, does, it, I feel, it feels like we've done more than a hundred though. Yeah, genuinely, like the work we put yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It feels like you've done about a thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 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 where, where do you think my ears gone? That's where my ears gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was it though. Like hundred episodes. Like I'll tell you what. Like the beginning was. Like, oh yeah, we'll just talk. But there's a lot more to it than just talking. Yeah. Which, but it's been it's been quality. It's been a good journey, and we've all we've all learned and progressed definitely over the last two years. And here's to the next hundred. Nice Absolutely, milestone. Yeah. Look forward to the 500 mark, me. That's the next one. <laughs> yeah, Just need to get one. What, 100 subscribers on YouTube, please. Yeah. So when this new house, Joey, you're going to set up a nice, nice studio. I am. I'm kind of literally sat where oh, my video keeps going. I'm on a about a 4G connection, but yeah, just that's my little spot there. Uh, I sort of, I've got a bit of a background. I can work with now. I sort of, sort of get, get, I'll get approval from the landlord to be able to put pictures up. Um, so yeah, when I do, I'll have some things behind me and have a nice little setup. And that's nice. And I've, well, I'll show you if I can turn this around. I've sort of got like a the main, well, I said a main road, called it Reading Road, uh, just over there, so I can people watch whilst um, doing the podcast as a nosy person I am. So yeah, it's nice. Thank you. Anyway, Joe, mate, we'll let you get yeah. back to uh, the, the form and giving you the win. <sighs> Thank you. This is probably the most fun I've had all day, uh, but it's been short lived. <laughs> All right, mate. We'll see you later. See you later, boys. Later, right. Okay, so week two of the ELF has wrapped up, and uh, some players are definitely starting to show um, they may be standing up above the rest. Uh, Craig, Tim, and I are going to break it all down for you all. So, we'll go through a bit of news first, as there has been some quite interesting stuff floating around. Um, so, of course, if you haven't checked out our Madre London interview, uh, go check that out. We'll put the link down below. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's the Russian leader uh, of the whole league and he's just having an absolutely phenomenal season. So make sure you check that out. And um, we've just spoken to Carlos Brown's defensive lineman for the Rotslav Panthers. So make sure you go listen to that as well when it's out. Uh, but on to the most, the biggest news so far out of the league, I think. Uh, Jacob Wright, the ex quarterback for the Stuttgart Surge. Uh, was ejected during the game, suspended from uh, the league, and then pretty much immediately um, cut from the surge um, due to a uh, racially, I guess, racially motivated incident on the field um, where he called um, two players, uh, Cadell King and someone else, um, on the Frank for um, a racial slur. Uh, we did speak to Cadell afterwards, uh, and he did give us a statement saying, I'm just happy with the way the ELF dealt with it quickly. The QB used racial slurs against me and another teammate post-game. I'm all for trash talking, but when you try to belittle another person because of the colour of their skin, there should be zero tolerance, and I'm happy with the message the league sent. And yeah, I mean, ELF could have done better. Immediate statement, did the right thing. They're, they're trying to be the next league, and I think they handled it very appropriately. Definitely. Um, but yeah, um, I guess that goes to show that um, it, I think they are serious and I, I think that we, we could potentially be looking at the, the next big league to come. Uh, and other bit of news that only recently came out is Cologne. Uh, there's been some sort of problem uh, with the home fields, whether that's sponsorship or funding or whatever it may be. And they are currently without a home field after their next home game, I think. Uh, and um, so all their current home games will be played in Frankfurt, or the next Frankfurt game, there will be a home, will be played away at Frankfurt. So 
and hopefully the centurions can get back on their feet because i think i'm actually being drawn towards them as my team <laughs> yeah i think the the reason why we're not entirely sure about the statement it was a statement in german that we had google translated so we don't know that much about it but I do know that people were talking before about Cologne having problems getting facilities in Cologne itself. They played one game in the stadium, but for whatever reason, they're struggling to get a stadium. Um, and hopefully, because everything else has been going pretty smoothly for the league so far, that they get the situation sorted out quite quickly. Like I said, they're going to be one of the top teams to watch. So so are you thinking of jumping ship then, Adam? Are you thinking of becoming a Centaurian instead of a Dragon? I don't think I, I I was fully committed to the Dragons, so I just want to say that. They still could be up there, but now that I'm kind of starting to see how each team's playing, and specifically Centurions have got one very good player. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I like the colour scheme. I don't. I honestly still don't know, but yeah, I'm definitely starting to lean towards Cologne a bit more. How about you guys? Have you guys managed to solidify a team? What about I'm pointing, pointing that way. I've nailed my flags to the door. I'm, I'm going with the Sea Devils. Is that a Hamburg Sea Devils J. Adrian Clark jersey? It is a J. Adrian Clark t-shirt. Available at ELF. It ships to the UK for a flat fee. <laughs> you, you're committed now, Tim? Is that it? Well, I am now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still kind of torn. I'm still torn between the Galaxy and um, the Panthers, um, especially after the last couple of weeks being a, a defensive guy myself. Um, Panthers have really been nice to watch on defence and special teams. And... Um, same with Frank Fett. I like, like what they do on defense. It's nice to watch. So I'm sort of I'm still torn between the two at the moment. Hoping by the end of the season I'll um I'll be like Tim. I'll have sort of cemented my team and uh, be rooting for them. Go and see a game. Hopefully next season. Yeah, man. If we can go see a game, if we can see a game this season, I'll cry. Right on to the games. Only three games this week. Uh, the bye week came very early in week two. Uh, there is only eight teams, so it's to be expected, I guess. Now Pajalo, who picked the ball off from O'Connor, Joe Gallows called the pass in their fence. From third down, here's Jallo, trying to make something happen. Al Pajalo springing loose, and he's off to the races. No one's going to get him. Touchdown, Leipzig. So, Leipzig Kings fell 28 to the Panthers' 54 points on Saturday. Uh, the Rotslav Panthers were able to dominate on offense for a second week in a row. Um, scoring 54 points, they didn't really leave the Kings a chance to, to come back in the conference matchup. Uh, the Kings did look bad, though. Flashes on offence and defence with uh, Timothy Knutel, which is a great name. Uh, standing out for his third touchdown catch of the season, and he had a really nice screen pass as well that I saw. Uh, Michael Bird song, uh, the quarterback as well. He, um, despite not winning, he played really well. Um, he's really good at scrambling, uh, and he's he's got an absolute bullet on him. So um, definitely keep a lookout for him. Uh, Alpha Jallo, the safety for the Kings as well, um, who obviously scored uh, an amazing kick return last week. Uh, he got another 91-yard touchdown return. Uh, I mean, if you just watch him play, he's, he looks quicker than anyone else on the field. Um, he had an interception call back due to another defensive back. Doing, like A very minor pass interference was a bit gutting. Uh, and yeah, um, Pascolini, the, uh, the Panthers running back, even though he's fast, he saw Jallo just almost like DK Metcalf, Buddha Baker style, just absolutely hung him down. Um, Lucas O'Connor, the Panthers quarterback, um, he really stood out. Four touchdown passes on the day, a lot of passing yards. Um, as I mentioned, Pascalini there had a big day with two scores on the ground. Uh, and both these teams are soon up in week three, uh, looking for their next wins on the road to the playoffs. Uh, Vroclav are now the first 2-0 and team. Uh, Leipzig Kings are 1-1 one and one, uh, after their second week. Uh, and some big plays and stats that I know are down here. A uh, cornerback for the Panthers, uh, Robinson. Uh, he had a, two interceptions last week, um, and he gets a field goal return to the house for a touchdown as well. Really, really good special teams play. Uh, and the Panthers wide receiver, Bernat, he held in two really nice touchdowns, including a beautiful over-the-shoulder catch in the end zone. Uh, MVP for me, I'm going to give it to Lucas O'Connor. Four touchdowns, 302 yards, no ints, which is an NFL stat line. Uh, Honourable mention goes out to Alpha Jallo again. Uh, two tackles, five assists, four kick returns for 167 yards and one touchdown. I mean, like you said, Craig, Panthers just look clean. They look disciplined. They are a force on the field. They look good on both sides of the ball. Um, 
it looks like they're not just like they do have you know players that do stand out, but it looks like they're pretty solid overall. They're a good solid team in a um, in every position. Um, like I said, they're particularly fun to watch on defense. I find um, there was quite a lot of free men, free man fronts as well, which I've been seeing. Um, yeah, it was a great game. Really enjoyed it. Third straight first down play. For the Galaxy Sullivan giving it off to Adams again. Third straight time. And Adams, he has a lane. He has a chance. And he goes all the way to the left side. Is that a touchdown? Not quite. Next game, first, oh, I guess at the same time on Sunday, uh, we had Frankfurt Galaxy scoring 42 on the Stuttgart Surge, who scored 20. Um, it was a it was a pretty one sided story this game. Uh, Frankfurt dominated pretty early on, uh, and Serge just couldn't really come back from it. Um, I think at, at half time it was twenty seven nil. So they, they they really did get put in a bit of a, a black hole. <laughs> um, Galaxy defense just um, held right back. Who in, in credit to right, he's he's a very nippy fellow. Uh, he he's, he can really move around on his feet. Uh, and uh, but and the the galaxy did get given some space to run around, but um, ultimately couldn't couldn't bring it back. Forty two twenty, uh, and with the Centurions winning against the Dragons, uh, three teams for the Southern Conference are now one and one. Uh, the Dragons being zero and two, uh, and the Surge are going to see the Thunder in Berlin, uh, whilst the Galaxy are hosting the Panthers, uh, which is probably right now the game, the best game coming up uh, that we're going to see. Um, obviously, Serge, uh, ex ex-quarter, quarterback, uh, right, made a lot of plays on his legs. And as Craig mentioned, he likes to hold his ball right out in oh, front of him. It was stressing me out, me how how just how far out wide he was holding that ball, it, like holding it like a loaf of bread. Yeah, it was like he was pulling him along. Uh, and MVP for the game, uh, it was a pretty balanced stat sheet overall, but I think we can give it to running back for the Galaxy, Adams. Uh, 11 carries, 115 yards for two touchdowns, including one big old run down the field where he got brought down on the one-yard line. Adams looks very solid. Um, I know we were talking to Madre the other day, um, and his stat line sort of as um, is sort of everywhere at the moment, and it's what everyone seems to be seeing. But Adams is, you know, you look at his numbers, um, you look at this game in particular, and again, pretty solid, not too shabby. Um, great performance by him. I think Frankfurt, let's not forget the first game, they narrowly, it was only late that Hamburg scored, so they could easily be 2-0. and oh. They're a very strong team. They've got a really good defence and they've got a good passing game as well as a running game as well. So they're a good all-round team. Yeah, that Frankfurt Sea Devils game was really good. And I'd like to put it to a vote. Um, can we call the Frankfurt Galaxy defence the black hole? Good name, bad name, terrible name? You could do a lot worse. I think it's a pretty decent name. The Andromeda <laughs> Pence. <laughs> what a ringing endorsement. You could do a lot worse. <laughs> so a lot of the supernovas. Uh, and then... Dashing right side. Andre London breaks another tackle. Now the 25. It's a beast one from... Uh, and then final games, uh, we had the Barcelona Dragons who scored 12 uh, and the Cologne Centurions who scored 40. Um, I mean, this game just showcased that Madre London is probably the force to be reckoned with in the ELF at the moment. Uh, after being the Russian leader in week one, uh, eclipsing 250 yards, uh, he surprised everyone again by going for 352 rushing yards and four scores on the ground. Uh, I mean, that... It, I, I get it's not the NFL, but I've just never seen someone so dominant over two games. Like any gap he saw, there was that one run where literally I think the entire team had one opportunity. Each player must have had an opportunity to tackle him, and he got past every single one. Um, but yeah, it, it remains to be seen if the the one and one Leipzig Kings can stop London next week. Um, Barcelona Dragons just weren't really able to get much going. Um, they, I mean, they had the opportunity. If, if you watch the game, the referees were, whether it was valid or not, the, the Barcelona Dragons were bailed out a lot by penalties. They just kept getting um, five-yard penalty first down for the offence. Uh, and Zach Edwards, he played well. He, he really, he's a good quarterback from what I watch. He's good at scrambling. He gets those passes out. Uh, but his offensive line just was not holding up well enough for him. He just had, had no time to, to really get anywhere. 
and they have to go now face the Hamburg Sea Devils uh, in Spain next week, and that's just not an easy defence he's going to be playing against. Uh, do keep an eye on, I mentioned him last week, Gene Constant, wide receiver for the Dragons. Uh, he's, he looked even better this week round. Uh, he's very, very quick, uh, and he can cut on an absolute dime. Uh, also, elf baller Quinton Pounds for the Centurions as well. Uh, he had a bigger week this week. Um, he had some really nice catches and an incredible touchdown in the end zone. Yeah, that's uh, touchdown. And- that touchdown I really enjoyed. Like, oh, yeah. it, come, it come right at the end of the half. He knew they were going to throw the ball, and yet he still managed to beat the corner and find the gap just between the corner and the safety right in the right in the corner he of the took end. An absolute wallop at the end as well. Yeah, it was a beautifully thrown ball as well. To be fair, he literally dropped it right in where he needed it to go. It was a it was a great touchdown. Let's not forget, Pounds is a quality player. If it wasn't for his, he had a few nasty injuries. He'd probably be in the NFL. He's that. I think he's that good a player. You're right. Yeah. What is it like? Two, three ACL injuries. So. Yeah. I, f- I think you, you are, we are seeing some players that are, in a sense, just trying to get their their tape back on, their highlights back on, so they can break back into the American leagues. And but for real, at least uh, Madre and Pounds, they could we could very well see them entering the league at some point. Yeah, he had another highlight reel run himself, didn't he, with his uh, his, his his beast oh, that, wake beast style beast run. run? Yeah, Jesus, just no, he's, he's got he's got it. Face, face yeah. case. Uh, the at the end was nasty. Yeah, that was the first one. The first thing I thought when the highlights finished, when I sat down, I finished watching the game and everything else was that guy's got a mean stiff arm. Like I've seen at least two or three in that game where people are coming out and trying to tackle him, and he's just like, "Get out of here!" No, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, of course, MVP and Taft's MVP of the week, Madre London again, three hundred fifty-two yards, four tuddies on twenty-five carries with a. A big beast mode run chopped in there. Uh, and then honourable mention to Gene Constant, uh, 259 yards from scrimmage, 158 of them receiving, uh, 75 on kick returns and 22 on punt returns. So a multi faceted receiver there. Uh, but overall, I mean, obviously that the Frankfurt game was a bit one-sided and, and so was the Cologne game, but they were good to watch because the Cologne, like the Cologne offence is, is great and the Frankfurt defence is great to watch. And then... Uh, as we said, the, the Kings uh, Panthers game that was just a whilst Panthers took it. Uh, sorry, while Panthers took it away, it was a great game anyway. Uh, but yeah, a couple couple of big games to look forward to as well. That um, the Panthers um, Frankfurt game is probably going to be one of the best of the season. I think yeah. we'll it's definitely the one to watch. Um, but yeah, um, obviously, let us know how you feel about our reviews. If you want us to include anything else you think we should talk about. And make sure you do check out our Elf Baller interviews because we are trying to get as many of the players on to talk to as possible. And it's really nice talking to them and seeing kind of their mindset on football. Um, you can check all our stuff out on our socials. Uh, they are all dotted around here on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the pod, uh, it's at Tafs underscore UK or just at Tafs for Facebook. Uh, we've got our website, That American Football Show. We've got our YouTube, uh, same again. Um, leave us comments, leave us feedback. We're wanting to get better so, you, so you're listening to us and enjoying it. Uh, if you've got any questions you want us to answer, um, just shoot them our way. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we get off, guys? Yeah, don't forget about our shop. If you're enjoying the videos and you want to help support the pod, we've got T-shirts, we've got hats, we've got hoodies. Um, it'd be great to see some... Him. Yeah, it'd be great to see some in the stands um, out there if you're at an ELF game. Absolutely. If, yeah, if we see you wearing an ELF kit, we'll definitely give you a shout out. Uh, but thank you everyone for listening. Make sure you head over and check out our friends at EP Sports for all your NFL and equipment needs. And we will see you for some ELF goodness. Next week.